Hello and welcome back to Keeping Up with the Thrones here on Full Circle. I am your host, Eliana Melendez, and I'm joined here again with the ever so lovely Jackson Hayes. Thank you for having me back. I didn't know if you'd invite me back. Oh, yeah, it, it was truly a debate. Um, it really what came <laughs> down to nobody else is watching this week on Game of Thrones. Oh, no. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. I'm just a super nerd that wants to watch it every week. Exactly. On the moment, like everyone else in the world. Yeah, everyone else just wants to binge it, you know, a bunch of entitled plebs. Yeah, but we're we're watching it live. Anyways, so <sighs> the premiere, it happened. It Episode it, one. Episode it one winter, titled Winterfell. It, it aptly titled, honestly, because yes, yes, I'd say so. A lot of people um had a lot of complaints that it was a very much a nothing episode. We heart we strongly disagree. Because even though it wasn't a very long episode, it was like, what, 50 minutes, maybe? Like, it didn't even uh, reach the yeah, hour. Yeah, 55, something like that. Yeah, it didn't even reach normal the length, hour. Not normal length. Exactly. So, it was very much a setup, everything, reunion type episode. And I, 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 I can agree with some of the critiques um, with the episode, but I don't know. We're going to dive into it. There's We're going to recap we're gonna criticize we're gonna see what predictions um we made in l- on the last episode which i think all of our predictions are still very much possible if not they're still alive as far as i know they're, I think still, they're still alive, alive and i think some are more alive than others like I'm i think i think surprised. one point is actually super alive that we didn't expect to be right that that's actually a, a really good point we'll talk about that later so yeah a uh, quick recap basically uh we start off in let's start off with the intro what do you think of that new intro because that was pretty I, I really dug it actually um i mean given that you know the past seasons they the intro will give you uh, a rundown of all the locations that are happening during mm-hmm. that season where we're going to be you know uh whether it be daenerys's story in in essos or or everyone else's story in westeros and the different portions of the of the country but here we basically get two we get winterfell and we get king's landing that's yep. the only places left. Those are the only major players that we're still going right now. So that's all we need. And it went, you know, deep dive into the crypts of Winterfell, you know, uh, you know, built mm-hmm. the whole entire structure and then went into King's Lane and did the same thing. I really dug it. I thought it was really in depth and really there were a lot of callbacks. It was really well done. Yeah, it was really well done. And also just the animation quality in it, in, it, uh, in and of itself was really impressive. Like compared, especially with the first season's intro, I thought it was really creative, especially that that King's Landing scene where with all the steps in the hall. Um, I think it was towards the Iron Throne where all the I don't know how to explain it, but like all the steps were like flapping forward <laughs> no, yeah, to, yeah, to create the whole thing. You know what you, you know what I'm talking about. Everyone who's listening is like, yeah, yeah, we get it. Um, I I thought that was really cool, and I liked the the nods to not only the locations but like past events, like the the wall in the north coming down and all of that, and just basically setting up and teasing the the season to come as we near the end. So yeah, I very much enjoyed the intro and Winterfell. We arrived to Winterfell. You you pointed something out earlier that I hadn't realized until you said it. Yeah, like I actually caught this immediately, which is something I usually don't do. But like since I've been watching rewatching the series recently, mm-hmm. I I caught it a lot more quickly than I thought I usually would. But mm-hmm. so you know, the opening shot is a kid running through Winterfell, or what we, we were like right outside of Winterfell, and uh, I I noticed something. I was like, this kind of sounds familiar. This feels familiar. Like this really feels familiar. And then he's running, he's running, he's running, and he's climbing mm-hmm. some stuff, and he bumps into Arya. And then he climbs up a tree and he's looking over to the Unsullied, which was, this, you know, this sequence was obviously a callback to the first episode when yep. uh, Robert Baratheon and the Lannisters and, uh, you know, his, 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 you know, cabaret of people show up in Winterfell uh, to ask Ned to be Hand of the King. It, it was a complete callback to the first episode. There was dozens of callbacks to the first episode. Uh, I saw pointed out, you know, more so than I caught uh, during my first watch, but it was, it was very very well done in my opinion the fact that uh, <laughs> would you it's say a mirror, it's very it's complete full mirror. circle i would say it's very full circle oh yeah for sure yeah but i i i really really enjoyed that i think you know i i'm gonna have to rewatch the episode before episode two because it's just a lot of attention to detail and i really like how and i and i think what was it? What was it that I said earlier? There was like a headline of an article on Vox saying that it's just payoffs now. It's not even storytelling. Um, f you. <laughs> I think I think it's good to have some nods and some some something satisfying to please the fans because the fans are the ones that have been here for eight effing years. So, 
you know, I really, really enjoyed the, the attention to detail and the nostalgia going into this episode, especially after being away for what, like over a year? Like, I think almost, this is the biggest. Two, almost, almost two. This is almost two years that we've been away from uh, Westeros. And it's like the biggest jump, like biggest break, I mean, between seasons, I think, that we've experienced. So I, it's really, I thought it was really important to do what they did. And I thought it was well executed. So, yeah. Um, what else happened? So, basically, if you guys haven't seen the episode, why are you listening? <laughs> Secondly, to kind of, re- I'm trying to recall exactly how that sequence went. I really love the shot with um, the Unsullied and then how Daenerys and Jon just kind of trotted up into oh, the so, view. Yeah, it was, it was fantastic. I thought it was such a satisfying shot. Like, that was really just, the whole episode, I think, was really, um, I don't want to say clickbaity, but it was very much hype it was a lot of hype it was a lot of epic hype for these characters coming back and as soon as i saw these really subtle slow moving shots with that that presents these characters that we've missed so much it really got me it got me excited it got me pumped so that was really good yeah completely because i think it's i think it's twofold it's we're being reintroduced to these characters we haven't seen in two years and then they're being introduced to a location that they've never experienced before Exactly. So, you know, we see them walking down the road to Winterfell, the Unsullied, which are a foreign army. They were bought uh, in mm-hmm. Astapor way back when, like season mm-hmm. three, season two. Um, yeah. And it's, it, you know, they've never traveled north and the northerners have never seen anything like that. They're, they're foreign. They're different. They're confusing. They don't understand them. And, you know, John points that out as they're, as they're uh, Daenerys and him are trotting up the, trotting up the road. And uh, it becomes clear that, you know, the northerners are not too keen on having these foreigners here which you know you know definitely comes out during the episode with all you know interactions between Sansa and Daenerys oh Um, absolutely that that whole interaction between them immediately set the tone for how um Daenerys's presence in Winterfell was going to play down because if even the Lady of Winterfell was on the fence of having Daenerys there like the entire she's she's basically in the den of the enemy even if they're allies, and it's a it's a it's a it's a clear debate, and I guess we can sort of get into this now because it, it's it's a mm-hmm. huge theme throughout the entire episode. But I mean, we can start it off right now, where yeah. it's 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 is John in the right? Is Sansa in the right? Is Daenerys in the right? It's all whose whose points are you taking? I think everyone everyone has valid points to be had. You know, everyone has concerns and issues. I think that's I think that's what makes it so interesting and diverse. It's like you can't really side one hundred percent on any one person because everyone's literally trying the best that they can right and to break it down you know plainly you know sansa is concerned <sighs> about bringing this this foreign army this this foreign queen bending the knee she obviously had an yeah. issue with john bending the knee and giving up his crown Yeah, because i wasn't which, the deal which, right which they called out during the episode liana mormont comes out and you know as good as her character is immediately calls out john because she does not care and um but you know she's concerned about this this queen they don't she doesn't know her she, uh, you know daenerys doesn't know sansa sansa doesn't know daenerys yeah. and it becomes clear that like Sansa's trying to protect her people because she's dealt with people like you know she believes Daenerys is she could be a Cersei she could be a Littlefinger she could be a Ramsay yeah. she doesn't know so she needs to be on her toes about it where John is like well this is my girlfriend you know this this is this yeah. I love this woman and I believe in her as queen and I yeah need he was not to. subtle in any way shape or form about no, it he He's literally he pulled up he said hey meet my girlfriend and Sansa was like I don't know this woman who is she why is she in charge now. And mm-hmm. I need to, you know, how am I going to feed these people? How am I going to do all this? But yeah, she she brought up completely valid points as a leader would. Like she has and, but, the weight you know, of that entire. Um, I'm not gonna. Should I say village? That entire uh, uh, like uh, the north, that the enti- north area. Yeah, you know, the entire area, the entire um, ki- we'll say kingdom. That the entire yeah, the king- single kingdom, the, land, kingdom the single of the kingdom of the north. She has that entire weight on her shoulders because you know, of course, there's other nobles that are allies and help out. She has to feed these people. She has to manage. She she's in an administrative position as well as you know one of uh, strategy in in a sense. Because yeah, they're at war, but at the same time, she's got to think of the details. Like you can tell that Daenerys, is, as good of a queen as she has been, is not much for. She's like a big picture gal, but she for, tends Absolutely. to very Sansa. much forget yeah. Yeah. the the little details. So when she's like, oh, the dragons eat whatever they want. And that's supposed to be a, like, oh, boom, bitch, in your face kind of moment. But at the same time, it was very much, it was egotistical of her. 
in a sense. Uh, it, it, yeah, well, neither of them won the altercation or in, in oh, absolutely not. It was both sides were, but I think I think that that scene is perfect because John is dead in the middle of that moment. Yeah, and, and I dead think inside. Placing him there is perfect because he is in legitimately in the middle of the mo- in in the middle of it because he wants to protect mm. the North. The North is his home. He's always been living in the North. He'll do anything for the North, but he also knows. He's the only one. I mean, Daenerys saw the army and she yeah. fought the army, so she knows. But he is truly the only one that knows what they're up against, full force, what he's seen in you know the past seven seasons, yeah. fighting the Night King, fighting the White Walkers. Like, and, and Sansa has no clue. Sansa has utterly no idea. Yeah. And Daenerys has some sort of idea. Obviously, you know, the Night King killed her dragon. She she knows things. But yeah. like, John is worried about saving these people's lives. He's not. He doesn't care about kings. Doesn't care about queens. He'll do whatever he needs to do. He's literally the only guy there with who has a clue. He's just here, like you know what? I don't care about your bickering. I know that we're just gonna. He's he's basically that one person in the group that knows the zombie apocalypse is coming, and no one just. It's it's like you know millennials with I mean, climate that, change. Yeah, completely, completely. That's been John's character the entire time. Like, please it listen literally to me. That. It is real. It is real. It's happening and there's no reversing it. We need to do this and we need to do this now or we're going to die. And that's been him for the past seven years, and basically. It's, 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 it got, he's got to be frustrated. He's just screaming. Incredibly. like old man, old man yells at Cloud. That's been Jon Snow for, for seven seasons. <laughs> he really has. That poor son of a bitch. But yeah. <laughs> um, but I think um, to co- go back on, continue on with Jon Snow, I get that he's trying to be, he's trying his best to be the good guy and the bad guy at the same time, like the neutral zone, the mediator. But Sansa was right in the sense that he does ha- he has let his emotions cloud him a bit, as mu- even though he tries to deny it. But it- he is absolutely, you know, enamored with this dragon queen. I mean, so am I. Who wouldn't? Sure. Uh, exactly. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, uh, Amelia Clark is a very good looking woman. She is very good. He's she's, smitten. She's, he's very smitten with her. He's very. That's the word. He is very smitten with her, and it's kind of like Daenerys has. I don't know if this is not really the first person she's been smitten with, but I think this is the first person that she has like maybe a chance with. Think, because well, marriage wise, I think it's well. the first person that she can like empathize with. Exactly. Like he, yeah. It's like the mo- the best connection she has ever had in her shitty <laughs> like history with relationships. This is the best connection she's had. So when you fast forward after all those really like um I don't want to say catty, not like cat fighty scenes because they're it's not. It's, I mean, it's, we're big, not it's gonna, bickering. It's just kind of it's you know, bickering. It's um it's it's beef. valid though, but it, it's, it's valid. It's, it's frustrating to watch. It is really frustrating to watch because you're just like. I just want to go in there and try to explain and mediate between the both sides, but it, I know it's not going to work because Sansa not only I think Dan, you know, Daenerys has more of a pride problem because of you know her huge ego with three no two dragons at this point, but yeah, the she, dragons. Yeah, she's always had that problem. She really has, and I mean, sure, if I had three dragons most of my life to <laughs> to boost my ego, my ego would be in the clouds too. But that's also her downfall, like. Take the dragons away. What is Daenerys? Exactly. Uh, yeah, it, 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 she's not. She's not nearly as intimidating. You know, it's not exactly. That's, that's, she, that's, her she, that's her thing. She relies too much on the intimidation of her dragons. She is clever. She is smart. Yes, she can be um, a bit reckless, but that's again due to relying. Be, she's very dependent on the dragons. So with Sansa, Sansa is not like her. Her side, her beef is not really a pride thing though it does come into it it's really just a more of a i've dealt with so much bullshit <laughs> to get to this point and you're saying this dragon queen is gonna take all that away yeah, in Sansa like two is, seconds she is, she's refusing to lose she will not lose and, and she's had enough that's her point she got her home back and she does not want to lose it and that's completely fair oh absolutely it's absolutely so yeah so and then i think one of the best exchanges even though it was really brief in the entire episode uh was her and Tyrion. i love i loved that moment i loved it because i, I, it I in my sad. head before we before the episode came out i was like who who has you know passed with who i was like who has the past with who like who yeah. which ones who's gonna have a scene together where they're gonna reconnect or reconvene and like at the last one like last moment i was like sansa and Tyrion were married 
for yeah. a decent portion of time. And yeah, we all and forget then, that. And I'm like, oh, I, like, oh, completely right. Completely oh. forgot. Completely slipped my mind. And then I was so happy that they had that moment there and where he came in and realized, like, look at her. She is a strong, powerful woman. She's yep. learned so much. She's she's coming to her own right before our eyes. And he was always kind to her. Like, he knew the situation that she was in and he was all, he never, he never really pulled any shit on her. No, so no, no. I and there's that, that she, mutual I don't think, respect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She has no beef with him, but mm-hmm. she also realizes that he might not be as smart as he thinks he is that she thought he was oh i loved that i loved that so much like i thought i did i truly did not think that she was gonna leave it at that but she did and it was cold and i loved it like just it, just straight up telling you know Tyrion effing lannister the guy who drinks and knows things i used to think you were the most clever man in the world bro <laughs> i mean it, it, was a, it was a punch it was a big punch definitely it was a big his punch ego. And she just walked away she just walked away that's and, um, that takes some balls. And I mean that 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 moment. I think that was the first interaction we got between like re- returning characters, sort of that that had had like a, like a reunion mm-hmm. in a sort of way. And like yeah. I mean, we, you know, they just kept coming and kept coming. And uh, if you want to jump to uh, Arya and John, which was probably you know the the oh that w- that the was the biggest emotional the pull because they have not one. seen each other since episode one. Or oh episode, my god! Episode two, episode one, episode two, maybe episode two. I think. Yeah, because um, it was when he, as soon as he left for the, the she, yeah, she watch. left for King's Landing. He left for the Wall, and they have not seen each other since. She still has the sword that yep. uh, he gave her in the first episode. Yeah, and it, 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 such an powerful moment, so emotional. I've really been excited for that moment. It, it definitely delivered. But I mean, to to you know deep dive that moment, the fact that that you know he comes to her, he comes to Arya saying, "Hey, Sansa's being real hard on me. I need some help." And then for yeah. her to pull the well, Sansa's kind of right was really yep. it was a really interesting moment which we had not seen like we've yep. not seen these kind of characters together and then for that to happen was really kind of interesting i i thought it was really interesting too because it really shows how aria and sansa's relationship developed especially over season seven where they were kind of at odds because aria was you know very wary to trust sansa but after that whole bonding thing with little finger and all of that they really i think they've really come into the whole we are sisters and we're all we we have anymore that we all each other has right now so we need to look out for each other and the fact that john because you know john and aria were always the closest oh john yeah, kind of yeah. relied on that whole well aria's always had my side so she understands when i need some help with sansa and to have that kind of backfire on him really i really hope that it kind of shocked him into a little bit of reality for him to at the very least be self-aware, analyze, take a step back from the situation, and look at it from Sansa's perspective, you know? Because as much as he's been, you know, Lord Commander, King of the North, all that, I don't think, and I could be wrong, but I don't think he's been in a position of leadership long enough to realize all the... Like the nitty gritty details, like again, like the well, whole he, administrative yeah, thing right. as Sansa right. went through. Because he's been, he's like the war leader. Yeah, he's great at that. But as a leader, leader, like a king, like just, you know, everyday, day to day things, planning, making sure that your people are fed, all that, um, the logistics, that's the word, all the logistics that go into it, he's not fully aware of that, I don't think. No, and it's never been his forte. I mean, when he was, mm-hmm. he was, you know, elected Lord Commander of the Night's Watch, and he got killed because he, yeah, he started a rift between the members of the of the order, and it was, you know, that was it was a mistake, but it was the right thing to do. But again, yep. just like his father, or not, you know, his uncle more so, but yeah. the man who raised him, Ned Stark, he's mm-hmm. honorable to a fault. You know, he he always does the right thing no matter what it costs really him, does. and it cost him his life, it cost him his position in King of the North. Yeah, it. It cost him everything, but but he he stands firm, and I think that's why he he he's does really stand such firm. A he absolutely stands firm, but he stands firm in a way that that Sansa does also stand firm, but in her in her ways. And mm-hmm. Arya will stand firm in her ways. Daenerys will stand firm in her ways. They're all yeah. really stubborn people, just trying to do the right thing. But yeah. it, it it it's going to come at odds because they're they're the the choices each of them made are different ones for you know each situation. Yeah, what I really love about this episode, it shows that it's not going to be, you know, oh yeah, everyone has a common goal now, they're going to team up, it's going to be, you know, one, two, three, let's get it done. Absolutely not. (laughs) Even these people that you thought were going to, like, at the very least, get along to a point that you can work together, they're having problems. 
So you can just imagine everything else that's the whole ripple effect that's going to cause um, between all these these teams at play whilst the whole, you know, the wall is down, the freaking White Walkers are already making their way down, and it's creepy. It's real. This is going to be like a, another, I feel like we're going to get more like horror-ish style vibes this season because of the whole winter came. And everything's really dark and gritty, especially that one scene in the in the wall. Oh, oh it was it was with the, 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 the yeah. The end of the episode was very, it was very ominous. It was very creepy. It was very like, oh, this is this is some yeah. dark dark stuff. Yeah, yeah. I I, I didn't expect it. I was like, oh yeah, it's gonna get dark. And like, no, I actually once that thing that thing on the wall, the the White Walker opened its eyes in the background. I'm like, oh no, oh I don't like this at all. <laughs> that is <laughs> creepy. So yeah, I, I like how they're they're building into the it's fantasy, but we're kind of getting into some horror genre vibes here, and it's gonna be fun. So yeah, I just I love the balance of like keeping because the show has gotten very fantastical. It's gotten oh, yeah. much bigger than it did in the first season. It's dragons, mm-hmm. it's White Walkers, it's it's a whole mm-hmm. other thing. But to kill to keep the like the the root of the show still like this political drama where where yes. they're still everyone's still you know beefing for a throne, beefing for the the you know the right to save their people do all the right things like it's still very much that and that's why they still have that there they haven't lost that which some people thought they lost last season and maybe they did here and there but you know hopefully they're able to keep that here even even with this giant battle that's coming that that the show will still stay in its roots which 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 is where it's at its best yeah it really is and and all those um i like how i feel i have a really good feeling that this season we're gonna get a um another array of iconic um exchanges and dialogue scenes such as like up there on the list is obviously like the Tyrion the Tyrion Lannister the Tywin Lannister and Arya Stark scene and back in season oh, yeah. two that oh, whole yeah. exchange like that. Yes, yes. and things like that scenes like that where that we will remember for the rest of the show I feel like we're gonna get back into this season because not only because it's the end but also because we have everyone together and we got a glimpse of that especially with the whole Sansa and Tyrion reunion scene I think it's going to be, this is going to be really epic in terms of writing and dialogue, as well as the fantastical, you know, creatures and action scenes. And we're supposed to get like a fight that's even bigger than Battle of the Bastards. So don't know when that's coming, but I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, I think that's supposed to be uh, next weekend. So not this upcoming weekend, but the one oh, after. Oh, like episode three? Yeah, episode three is supposed yeah. to be the Battle of Winterfell, as, as far as I know. Um, right. But so you know we got one week in between. So let's 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 break down a couple other things that went down. Um, right. Uh, we can talk about the fact that uh, the the Sam the Sam scene the Sam scene oh, with, yeah. da- with Daenerys and Jorah, which was another great great moment. Yeah, that um, that really took me in for a spin. Uh, John Bradley, like the acting, he was like Sansa. I feel like Sophie Turner really was the MVP of the episode in terms of you know what she, she did, was a standout her performance. She was a huge standout. But his moment, he had the best moment to me. His like the, the subtle really acting did. with the crying in the moment yeah. Daenerys came in and revealed that that uh, she killed her his father and brother. I felt that it was it was a tough moment because like she came in there with intention of helping him because he saved yeah. Jorah. He was the one that you know gave didn't give up on Jorah when when he needed someone the most, and and she went in there to praise him. And then as it turned out, she had murdered his family, and that was very hard for her him to take in. Which you know he didn't have a good relationship with them at all. They were always at odds, but he did love his brother. He loved his father. And he loved was, his brother was, especially, but yeah, they yeah, were which, I, it was very I, difficult. It was hard for me for that scene because then, like, I was trying to remember. I was like, "Oh wait, shit!" She executed, you know, his father and his brother, but at the same time, they also tr- were the assholes that were trying to kill the dragons and had sided with the Lannisters and all of that. Like, they weren't great people. So, like, I kind of understood her thing, but I saw how awful she felt to have realized. Oh no, I did a whoopsie real bad. Like she's trying to be, you know, generous and caring and and grateful as she normally is because I don't think Daenerys has been ungrateful in many moments, especially when it comes to people that actually help her. Um no, but no, yeah, I think this it, was it, a really good shock. I hope so. I I don't know if it'll actually stick, but I but hope it's a, a good them, shock to both I of them. Was, Obviously yeah, right. it was I a think... shock to Sam. Yeah, it was one of those moments where, again, like we're going right back to it, where you can see both sides clearly. Yes. Like, obviously, his family's dead. He's broken about it. That was his family. He loved them. 
but on her side he she gave them a choice she everyone she else really bent did. everyone else bent the knee she gave them the choice they were too proud and too honorable could she have taken a prisoner yes but what kind of message does that send like yep. it, she's he, she's here to take it cersei she does not want to deal with cersei she does not want to deal with her supporters and she gave him the choice, and they refused, and she did what she had to do, so. Yeah, she did, she did what she felt she had to do, because it's not like you really have the time and the resources to be doing this whole prisoner of war thing at the no, point, at that point. take everyone prisoner at that point. Exactly, because, you know, she wasn't going to pick and choose, all right, I'll give you guys a break, and you all, all set on fire. No, she was trying to be as, in, you know, within her situation. She was trying to be as fair as possible. Like, she didn't just straight up kill them. She gave them a choice, as you said. Like, she tried to show mercy. And, she, you know, they knew what they signed up for. They knew their what they decided. And, yeah, it, it was still hard for her. And I hope that this shock kind of kind of tells her, am I, you know, kind of kind of makes her ask the question, am I being another mad king? You know, obviously, that's a whole extreme. But, or, but yeah, am I ruthless? Am I am I like my father? Am I exactly? Because I, I think mistakes? I think that's the the one thing that she, with all of her actions, with it, her entire reign, because she was supposed, you know, she's the breaker of chains for crying out loud, you know, first and foremost, she's frees slaves. That's her whole thing. But so so for her to realize finally oh maybe i am in some ways like my father i need to cut that shit out and be done with it because everything like, she, else she's done has been trying to defy what he did well the theme of the show i think the entirety of the show is is learning from your father's mistakes it I really think, you is know, with ned stark tywin lannister uh robert Baratheon, and uh, the mm -hmm. mad king all of it everyone has like this this person in their life who they're trying to learn from who they're exactly. trying not to repeat their mistakes and you know, John has dealt with it. Sansa's dealt with it. Arya's dealt with it. Now Daenerys is dealing with it. She's dealt with it before. It's yeah. like you cannot repeat the mistakes. And like she felt like, like I did I do the wrong thing in this moment? But did she? You know what I mean? Like it. Yeah. Like just because she met like the she guy did have some self doubt. Be, or, she, you know, did, she had a moment of did. doubt there, but you know, at the same time, she stood firm. It was like, well, this was the decision she had to make. You know. And then, and then that obviously took it took, you know, Sam a very difficult moment. And then he runs outside mm -hmm. and sees Bran, and Bran tells him, "Hey, we need to tell John. We need to tell him right now." Which yep. is something I didn't think was going to come in this episode. I didn't think it was right. going to come until maybe episode five or six. Like no, no, it, it, this like that happened so quickly. I was really surprised at how efficient that was. And I mean, hey, our, Bran said in the, in the in the very beginning of the episode, he said, "We don't have time for any of this." We have time for none of this nonsense. We need to get this stuff moving right now. And he's like, I'm going to, we need to tell John. And then Sam runs down there. What does he do? He He's he's emotional. He's upset about what Daenerys did. Yep. And he tells John that he deserves to be king of the Seven Kingdoms because he's Aegon Targaryen. He's the rightful heir to the, the Iron Throne. And, and you know, obviously John is shook, <laughs> you know, to, to put it <laughs> no lightly. No kidding. And, you know, he oh, doesn't, he does, you know, and, and at that point he's like, well, Daenerys shouldn't be our queen. And, you know, John is like, that's my girlfriend now. What, what, what you know, what's happening here? What, I, I just bent the knee. I'm, you know, all these things. And he's like, well, the White Walkers are coming. You know, his mind's probably racing a million miles a minute. And it's just mm -hmm. like, what? And it, it, I mean, that, that, that moment's been coming, you know, what, it, seven seasons in the making. Yeah. This, this, this moment that, that who is Jon Snow? Who was Jon Snow really? Who was his mother? Who, where does he come from? Yeah. And it, it comes out and it's like, I love the moment. Now? I love the moment. I was a little, I was a little taken aback because it happened so abruptly. At least right. to me, um, that uh, in rewatching it, I liked it a lot more. But at first watch, I was like, "Oh, this is happening! Oh, oh shit! What are we doing? What are we doing?" Yeah, everything happened. A lot of people were like, "Oh, this is a really slow episode," but at the same time, everything was happening happening pretty fast. Like they were getting, they were working through it. Like I think Bran, Bran had something to do with the writing because he's like, "We don't have time for this. We need yeah, to do this." And nonsense. That was the one nonsense. time I agreed with Bran. That creepy mother effort. The creepy. I mean, John even, you know, the look he gave, uh, John gave him when he when he pulled up. He's like, You're just a creep <laughs> now, aren't you? <laughs> You're just like, oh my god. All the memes from <laughs> with Bran oh, the, over the, the memes over from this episode week. were a one. Mwah. They were beautiful. They were premium. They were wow. The, this week we can discuss maybe some memes or just like post oh, them yeah, around. Definitely, definitely. But yeah, wow, for sure. that was great. Um, so yeah, I'm really, I'm really surprised. Uh, they actually a, I'm surprised that a John found out so quickly and b that he 
I don't know. I I just I, maybe it's just me, but I may have expected like a much more dramatic, not dramatic, but more visceral reaction. Like maybe denial from John, like a little bit more than that. But I think he just kind of accepted, went through the the five stages, seven gr- stages of grief of you know Ned Stark having lied to him his entire life, but yeah, to protect no, him. Like Ned Stark received so much grief for having John and he took it in stride because he promised his sister he would take care of her son. Well, and that's exactly 20, what he yeah, did. Absolutely. There's 20 something years of, of pain and, and agony and confusion exactly. and, and misunderstandings thrown at him in one moment. Yep. And you know, it's, it, it it's gotta be the hardest thing to deal with because there's so many layers at this point with Daenerys. Yeah. Who, who just bent the knee to who he really is, what his father said, who his is that his family's truly not his true family. Exactly. And it's, it's just such a mosh pit of like, I didn't want any of this. I never asked for any of this, which has been his entire life. You know, that I, is I didn't true. ask to, I didn't ask to be Lord of Commander. Flung I didn't ask into to be King everything. Of right. And at this point he's just like, What do I do? Like what on earth do I do? And we won't know until, you know, probably until after the battle because he That's true. You know, you know, they're gonna suit up and they're gonna get ready and obviously something else came up at the end of the episode we'll get to in a minute. Um, that, that they're gonna have to deal with more pressing matters, but Yeah. Like 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 this this moment, like it 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 was a lot to take in, obviously for the audience and for John, and we're gonna have to see where it goes from here. Yeah, we're definitely gonna have to see. Um, I'm just I think that kind of trumps our our little not prediction, but our little theories of well, what's John? What what's gonna happen if Daenerys finds out finds out first and John and all that? I'm glad that John found out first and not Daenerys, because I think that would have been a trope that would have tired us and frustrated us to no yeah, end. I think I think it would have been a line a Paul outline we really didn't need. I think mm-hmm. it was an unnecessary like side plot. Yeah, I'm glad. Yeah, it, it would have dra- you know dragged on for a little bit for you episodes and just been kind of annoying. So I'm glad they got that out of the way. Like as abrupt as it was, I'm glad it got out of the way. Like he knows who he is. He's gonna you know go go to therapy or something and deal with it. But right now, I think the whole emotional unravel of all the implications of his heritage is yet to come. Absolutely. Maybe. Absolutely. Like right now, he's in war mode, and I don't know. I I have a feeling he's going to tell Daenerys, though. Like, I have this sneaking feeling that unless he takes what Sam says to heart, that she shouldn't be queen, I I feel like he's going to tell her and she's going to, I don't know how she's going to react. Because then she might take it as a threat. I think she might feel it as a betrayal or a, uh, even though it's not his fault. Oh, you come, how long have you known this? What, what, you know, what, all all that kind of stuff that'll run through her head. Like, someone's trying to take my crown. Someone's trying to take my crown. And, yeah. and she's always I mean, on the on the fence oh, she's about always, that. She's always on edge about this kind of thing about her about someone coming after her <sighs> her rule, insulting her, or or thinking that she's not fit. And it's it's that would be the ultimate. Hey, you're not fit to rule. And exactly. um, I mean, it was it was. I, it's gonna be hard to see how she reacts because again, like we're probably not gonna find out in this next episode because there's so much else going on. But yeah. Um. Um. It's I mean, tough. Uh, Sir Davos already, you know, kind of. Sir Davos with yeah, I mean, who he, was he, he talking to? He alluded to the best. The best. Uh, he did allude. Var- Varys, Varys he was and talking to, to Varys and Tyrion. He's like, oh yeah, they might just you know make a good couple and make you know make right. good and of course, rulers. That's the, like it would the, be the logical thing. It would be you know? the sweet ending. It'd be the nice r- bow yeah. on our, you know bow wrapping. But like it's not know. gonna. It's be not that. gonna happen. <laughs> like, it's not. But you know what? What might happen and what I feel like mm, will. Or at least is more likely to happen now that we talked about in the predictions episode, Arya and Gendry. Uh, what a moment! Her and the Hound, and her and Gendry, just you know, all years and years of you know coming back together, and then they are super flirty. They're super, oh yeah, they're like super right off the bat. It. I I was I was it was cute though. It was she, like... she she's always had a thing for him because yeah. you know, he was the hot guy he was the you know teenager she was little, or, you know, 20 yeah. something she was a little girl or slightly younger but now she's you know she's a woman she's a full-fledged woman and then she you know he sees her for who she is this yep. you know badass you know strong woman exactly. and he's like wow, wow there's obviously a little something something there, i hope Arya gets connection. a happy ending i mean listen they're cute they can they can hang out they can rule the seven yeah. kingdoms together Honestly, yeah. I mean, people, as soon as that happened, people on Twitter were like, oh, yeah, they could totally rule. And it's like, <laughs> you guys clearly, like, should have listened to episode one because we called I mean, it. We called we it. Called we called it first. A week ago. So, I mean. <laughs> yeah. Pretty pretty chuffed. I'm pretty proud Just about saying, that. Gen- Gendry's more important than you guys are giving him credit for. 
That is he's a, very true. He's a, he's, a, he's a big deal. He really is. But yeah, I really like how, how they're setting that up. <laughs> I think it's going to, minimum, I think that they deserve at least somewhat of a happy ending. Or a happy no, death I mean, yeah, together. Yeah, yeah. If, they, if they end Who up knows? together and they, they're happy and they get to move on with their lives, good, awesome. They don't need to, they both are I don't good. need them to rule. It would be nice. It's my, it would be my exactly. Dark Horse prediction. But, but you know, give an Arya and Gendry happy ending because they, they've gone through a lot of stuff together. They really have. So I, I like how that kind of, you know, it's one of the, 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 it's literally one of the few reunions of the episode that is actually positive and like nice. It, it, and there's it, no what, beef there. I'll, I'll say the Hound one, the Hound one was interesting because she came in all, oh, I hate you. You know, you know, you hate mm-hmm. me. But he, he obviously saw, he was like, wow, you've become like, you're like, you're, you're something like you're, you're this, you're powerful. I see it in yep. you. You're, you're, you're more like me than you know. And he really like was, it seemed to be proud of her. Yeah. I, th- I think he was, I, I don't know if it was so much just pride as more impressed. I think it was really just definitely more, impressed. more Absolutely impressed. impressed. Like, wow, you know, as you, you what was it that you called her? Cold bitch or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. in a compliment sort of way. <laughs> Absolutely. The, be- the best way you can call someone a bitch. <laughs> exactly. It's like, wow, you really are a cold bitch. It's like, oh, thank you. Huh, thanks. <laughs> I mean, she earned that title, honestly, in the best way possible. She's been through it. And to think that. She was just like this little girl with a needle that was just learning from scratch how to use a sword to now a full fledged, you know, fully trained assassin who is just, I don't know, she's a force to be reckoned with, especially with that whole, like, she's getting better at the whole deception thing. I love the parallels of her and Sansa because both of them have gone through the ringer, but they've also, they've learned from some of the best people that they could learn from in their respective places you know right. Sansa gets captured gets held in King's Landing she learns from she learns from the mistakes of Joffrey and Cersei mm-hmm. and she travels with Littlefinger and learns about him and Ramsay and all these things and all these people she's lived with and dealt with and then you go to the other side with Arya who, who with the Hound with Jack and Hagar with uh-huh. uh, uh, Serial Pharrell in the first season like she's learned from these you know you know big people bigger than life people and then she's become her own they both come exactly. into their own as, as, as their own versions of those people who you know who come out alive because most of them are dead at this point exactly i think um that's really their their strong suit and what has helped them survive to this point because they've learned from the best of the best and not only have they learned from the best of the best they've learned from the mistakes of the best so i think that's that's the main reason they've made it so far absolutely and i really i really hope that you know that that survival instinct and that skill you know sees them throughout the end I hope so too. I mean, I, I I do hope they both end. I think, honestly, I think like I mean, honestly, if we don't have anything else to like really go through in the episode, other than uh, I mean, we we let's talk about Jamie real quick before we. Before oh, we that's go in. true. Yeah, how it um, ended. So the big and moment. I uh, loved the ending again. Paralleled the first episode completely with Jamie yep. throwing Bran out the window in the first one, and then this one. Here we go. It's 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 Jamie and Bran again, one v one. Uh, yep. Bran had sat out there all night waiting for him, apparently, because yep. no one, no one cares about the Lord of Winterfell. <laughs> Just leave him sitting out there. <laughs> no one says, "Hey, man, it's cold." You want to come I don't, th- I don't, I don't think anyone is like, like they might care, but they're like, "I'm too scared to talk to him." Like, if I tell I mean, him to probably, go inside, he's probably, probably just gonna, you know, melt me with his eyes or something. Sam is like his only friend right now because they're both weirdos. <laughs> That's <It's> true. <laughs> oh, that poor thing. Good lord. I mean, it's just like, you know, Bran just sits there, and then Jamie arrives in Winterfell. He rides up. He's like, oh, I'm back. Here we are, looking around. And he yep. just looks over, and there he is. Bran just dead staring at him. He and what like, a yeah, way I to cut you. it out, because, like, just eight seasons of that started it all. That started everything. Yep. And then here we are, uh, yep. uh, you know, eight seasons later, 1v1 again. Yeah, when you, when you go and back and watch the episode, you realize how so many small moments and small events really started a domino effect to shaping each and every one of these characters and to see that that domino you know fall end not end but i like i like come back to the beginning i guess full circle yeah, uh, we're gonna use that probably it, a thousand really, times yeah we're gonna season. use it a thousand times but yeah it came full circle and it was really satisfying and i really really enjoyed how the episode was structured like i thought you know at first the first time like as, as i was watching it i was like oh well, maybe it's just this, you know, first episode is always a little slow, but it was slow for a reason. It, it was a very much a build up. We're, build up, we're getting things out in the w- open. We're getting everything set up so that we can really get to the point in a Absolutely. lot like the following episodes. 
and uh, I mean, we, we before we get out of here, we can just run down our predictions, like, uh, how they're standing Ooh, yeah. for this point before we move on. Um, I think the Sansa for the Iron Throne is still alive and well. I think that's oh, yeah. honestly might be my front runner at this moment after I this think first episode. I honestly, we stand Sansa. I I can't believe we said that. I can't believe I've said that. But I think we are Sansa stands in the sense that she should be, you know be on the throne at this point because look at everyone else. John doesn't want it. He should, you know, he's the one that should get it, like technically, but he sure as hell doesn't want it. So I really think not only will Sansa like have a chance to like be the one who ends up on the throne, I think it's going to be the scenario where John finally gets it. Daenerys is dead. And John hands it over to Sansa because he just wants to like he wants to Thanos it and just like retire to a farm. Honestly, he's tired. He's just real tired. <laughs> he's I, just real tired. I, tired. He just wants to go home and scream at some clouds. I think honestly, I think the show is grooming her for this. Like in a way yep. that like, you know, she was she was groomed to be a lady. She was groomed to be married off to a lord or even the prince and then in the king and all that. But like yep. the show itself is grooming giving her these moments that are going to pay off in the end when she ends up on the throne, which I could easily see happening at this point. They gave her so much to do in this episode. She really did. And I think like it's going to get to the point where you're like, oh, so this entire time it has been building to the point to prepare her for this one moment. What that and one moment exactly is going to be, we have to find out, but I know it's coming. Like I feel it. And I think a lot of people were like, I don't know how I feel if Sansa ends up on there with a the payoff. I don't know. You know, she's mm-hmm. she's not been a fan favorite through the beginning Ever. of the season series, but uh, I think she's becoming that now. And I think I think people are really warming up to her. And yeah. I think by the end of the season, that just may be where we end up. Yeah, I, I'm really excited to see what happens. Um, I think before we we leave off, I uh, any other predictions? I think. Uh, let me see if it, I like, think Jamie dies in, in the next like, episode. It, <laughs> I genuinely think that like all cards are on the table. Jamie might I still, like die. I don't I don't think this episode changed much at all, which isn't saying a lot because like our you know our our predictions were mostly for the end and this was just the beginning, so it's it's hard to say. I still think Jamie bites it. I think I think Tyrion might bite it, and that that moment with Bronn was really ominous that we didn't really touch on. Yeah, it was kind of thrown in there a little it was bit. Very, it was very really very weird. very. It was a very kind of like out of place scene. But I feel like it's we're it's gonna make sense eventually. Like what what are we gonna supposed to do with this? You know. I guess I, guess I just uh, Braun killing one of those guys. I just don't know how I feel about that and how yeah. like how I see that coming. But uh, I don't think he's gonna uh, actually do it. Uh, but, may, he I might pull know. off one of them. I don't know. I have no idea. Who knows? But, maybe he'll fake one of their deaths. Oh. Maybe maybe one of them oh. gets away. But I, I mean I don't think Cersei makes it. So what does it really matter what he does? I don't know. I think I think we should close it off on on two main major points. Drogon staring at John as he oh, kisses what, his aunt. What a moment! And the elephants. The flipping <laughs> elephants. I, well, <laughs> the two main fair, memes of I the was episode. Cersei. I was Cersei because last season when she. I said, mean, anyone oh, would be mad. Company has elephants. I'm like, are we getting elephants? Are we getting Lord of the Rings full on elephants right now? Right. Like, I'm pumped, and they're like, no, no elephants. I'm like, oh Jesus, come on! <laughs> she all was the money so mad. HBO gave you no elephants. <laughs> she was mad as hell, and I, you know what? I get her. I get her. She's like, I wanted elephants, but at the same time, I was like, dude, how are you gonna get elephants priority mailed shipped on a ship? <laughs> over I mean, the ocean I guess, I guess i understand it but like come on can't get could have pulled something yeah just get like get some elephants on the fucking dragons or something and then, yeah the the dragon riding moment and then the moment after i mean i mean we all knew john was gonna ride a dragon i didn't know it happened this early but uh it was pretty funny it, it though pretty pretty funny pretty this episode was pretty funny there was some pretty it funny was moments. actually really com- was surprisingly comedic it was really good though it was thoroughly entertaining I had fun with it. A lot of people had fun with it and really gets us prepared. I, I think it we need to laugh in preparation for all the like the, the grief that, and the crying and the emotion. I, it's a lot of, I think <laughs> that's, that's what uh, the actor, the brand actor, Isaac uh Isaac Hempstead Wright, I think his name is. Yeah. He came out and said that, you know, this is the moment where you can all smile and laugh, but you know, prepare for it's the oncoming over. onslaught. So <laughs> it's enough. We're, we're we're done with the whole that happiness. Yeah, you yeah. Get, one, get, you get over one, that. You give me happy one episode, and then we're honestly one. very generous with us because we normally don't give us even that. So absolutely, I'll take it. I'll take. One. I will take whatever I can. So yeah, that's uh, basically it for this recap. What an episode! Oh boy, so Sunday's talking. episode sure is going to be, be something. Next week. 
Yeah, episode two is going to be something. Um, yeah, we'll talk about it next week. Um, where can they find you, Jackson? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at JacksonHay67. You can find the page at Full Circle Cine and on FullCircleCinema.com. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, check out Full Circle Network with all of our shows. Uh, we'll have a Full Circle broadcast up by now. So you go yeah. check out the second episode Be sure of that. to subscribe. Yeah, and subscribe, like, put comment, the notifications please, on. Because we got some shows coming out and we're pumping out the episodes. You can find me on Twitter at Captain Melendez. And again, be sure to follow everywhere. It's full circle cine. And we're off. We're ke- Thanks for keeping up with the thrones and keeping up with us. And we, we hope to ha- be, you know, be joined by you again next week. All right. Bye, guys. <laughs>